Okay, what we're looking at is a leader LDC 823A. It's uh, a two range, uh, 80 megahertz in the first range and 250 megahertz in the second range uh, frequency counter. And uh, has three gate times, uh, tenth of a second, one second, and ten second averages. It'll measure uh, frequency and period. Um, it has a sensitivity of 20 millivolts uh, RMS to, and a, with a push of a button, 200 millivolts RMS, and an impedance of either 50 ohms or 1 meg ohms. So you can, it's sensitive enough to be used in uh, circuitry, or it's uh, uh, got a 50 ohm output to match uh, uh, transmitters and other type of hardware. So. Uh, a very nice uh, be piece of bench equipment. I uh, am attracted to the color of the uh, fluorescent display. Uh, this particular unit uh, right now we are measuring uh, the output of a um, rubidium frequency source. The standard puts out uh, a signal that is accurate down into approximately one thousandth one thousandth of a hertz at 10 megahertz. I mean, it's really extremely accurate. And uh, we are we have that signal on the meter, and you can see that we are reading 10 megahertz to within one hertz. And uh, at times we uh, our 10 second average, we see it go from all nines to uh, one with all zeros. So there there we go. There's your 10 megahertz. So we are extremely close. Uh, in frequency um, somewhere down around a fraction of a hertz. Uh, then what we got to do now is we have to show you that the uh, the unit will function uh, at other frequencies. But let's take a physical tour first. First of all you can see that on the front panel let's see if I can get the glare off of the glass the uh, on the front panel there are generally no markings there is one uh, one minor scratch over in this area here, if you can see it, but uh, otherwise uh, the front is beautiful. The um, top of the unit, shiny, nice looking, same with the side, it's got a good stand. this side and uh, we'll take a look at the rear let's uh, go ahead and move this there we go so we have uh, both internal or external um, inputs and outputs for the for the time base, here's your adjustment point for the 10 megahertz time base. That's the point I used when I adjusted this unit. Calibrated it. We have uh, four feet on the bottom and the bottom is in good shape as well. So that is the quick physical tour. Now what we want to do is we want to see this thing function. So I'm going to hook this thing up to um, this PTS 500 and we will run it from uh, roughly a half a megahertz up to about uh, I don't know it's supposed to be a 250 megahertz counter we'll probably take her up to 350 and we'll find out what the top end is so let's go ahead and do that
right. All right, once again, we see 10 megahertz, but this time it's coming from the PTS. And um, we're going to start taking her out. Let's go 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 20, Let's, let's just shortcut this. We'll go to 200, 20. Yeah, there's 220. Let's try 320. 320. Can we get 420? No. Back to 320. 330. 340. Okay, we're breaking up at 340, so I'd say 330, we could go up and fractionalize, let's see, uh, 331, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Okay, I'd say seven. Yeah. 337 is probably our top end here. So it looks like we're losing our count on the lower end. Uh huh. All right, so 337 at the top end it is. Let's go the opposite direction. There's 900 kilohertz, 800, let's go ahead and change our range, get a little more, uh, there's 700 kilohertz, 600 kilohertz, 500 kilohertz, 400 kilohertz, now we're going to have to switch to a different unit now. So what we're going to do to continue downwards is we're going to go to this um, Hewlett Packard 3320, which synthesizes lower frequencies. All right, we're back at 400 kilohertz. There's 300, 200, 100. Ninety, eighty, seventy, sixty, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. There's nine hundred, 
800, 700, 600, 500, 400, 300, 200, 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 9 and when we get to 4 I'm gonna I'm gonna kick us into the 10 second average here's 8 7 6 5 4 okay we go to a 10 second average let's go to 3 Three, go to two. There's two. Let's try one. I don't believe we're going to get one. So I'm going to say Looks like two hertz is the uh, bottom end. There's two. One. That's one. So we got all the way down to one hertz. Ah, we just lost it. Okay, two hertz. So we can read from two to uh, three hundred and uh, oh my goodness, I forget already. I believe it was three twenty-six. Uh, so the unit is working well; it tracked well, and it, it goes well beyond its specifications. Um, let's take a look at the period function. Let's try a period read. Let's go back to two hertz here. All right. Why would you need a period read? Well, you could read two hertz, and you're going to get in a 10-second average. The best you're going to get is two places. And we're going to get 0 0.0020. So that last place is uh, is the accuracy of 2.0 hertz. But let's let's go to period. Okay, so we put ourselves on 2 hertz, and we are reading on period, we are reading 500 milliseconds, which would be correct for 2 hertz. Let's try 3 hertz. Alright, I'm getting 333.34. If I was to uh, 
divide 1 by 333, actually it'd be 0.333, 1 divided by 0.333 seconds, that would give me the frequency. And it would wind up being 3. Okay, here we are reading uh, 250 milliseconds, that'd be 0.25, 1 over 0.25 is 4, and that's what I'm set at now is 4 hertz. So you really, you get more resolution reading the period of the slower frequencies, and that would help you set the, the lower frequencies uh, more accurately. So there's a good reason to have a period. And uh, along with this unit, I'll give a set of leads and a manual.